Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellies Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Saturday, the 30th of January, 2021, in the third week in Ordinary Time. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, increase my faith in your redeeming love and power that I may always recognize your abiding presence with me and give me courage to do your will in all circumstances. Amen. Daily Scripture from the Magnificat An Overview of our Readings To the disciples who are terrified by the storm on the sea, Jesus says, Do you not have faith? Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Our faith in Christ assures us in the midst of the violent squalls and waves of life that He will enable us to cross to the other side, for example, heaven. In our reading today, we hear he was looking forward to the city whose architect and maker is God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For the thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Responsorial Hymn comes from Luke 1. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to His people. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our sins, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, 
to set us free from the bonds of our enemies, free to worship Him without fear, holy and righteous in His sight all the days of our life. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to His people. Alleluia, alleluia. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in Him might have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. In our reading, who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verse 35. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our meditation of the day also comes from the Magnificat, entitled, When Jesus Sleeps. The gentle Virgin Mary often contemplated the ineffable beauty of Jesus asleep. With the eyes of a mother, a lover, and an artist, she enjoyed the celestial delight of that marvelous divine beauty. What majesty in that sweet repose! What radiations emanated from the sacred humanity, quietly resting there! With the person of Jesus, the phrase of the Song of Solomon. I slept, but my heart was awake. Is not a figure of speech used in the language of love, but a profound reality of the divine order. Beatific love burned in his heart, enveloping with flames of blessedness and glory that sacred heart ever alert for love, ever living to make to his father the holocaust of his tenderness, ever active to pour into souls the treasures of his mercy. Jesus lives mystically in souls, reproducing in them all the mysteries of his mortal life. With the keen intuition of her love, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus understood the mystery of this mystical sleep, expressing it with her inimitable language, full of ingenious and truest poetry. Quote, Jesus slept in my boat, as was his wont, but how rarely souls will allow him to sleep in peace. Wearied with making continual advances, our good master readily avails himself of the repose I offer him, and in all probability will sleep on till my great and everlasting retreat. This, however, rather rejoices than grieves me." Unquote. Who else would have thought of interpreting the dark, painful chasm of spiritual desolation with such amiable, heavenly light. Almost all souls are disconcerted by desolation. 
They conclude that Jesus has gone away, that the sweet visits of former times, bright and fragrant as a spring garden, were a fleeting dream, an idol interpreted through their own infidelity and ingratitude. They fear that the love so sweet, so deep, and so sure, to which Jesus had invited them, has been turned into hate. These desolate souls surmise everything except that Jesus is only sleeping within them. Just as he slept in the idle bark on Tiberias while the wind roared and the tempest raged. Only the pure eyes of the gentle child of Lesur, only her gaze of love could discover the secret of a lover. Jesus had not gone away, nor will he ever leave, because love, strong as death, never departs, and its divine ardor cannot be extinguished by the torrents of our ingratitude. Jesus continues to live in the soul to whom he pledged love, because his name is faithful and true. Revelations 19.11 he sleeps sweetly in the soul which belongs to him. This was written by a servant of God, Luis Maria Martinez, who was an archbishop and died in 1956 and was a spiritual author and the first official primate of Mexico. Our Daily Bible Verse how I deal with fears. Quote, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? Mark 440. Can fear be learned? A child who sees her friend put her hand on a hot stove and be burned would be afraid to try the same thing. Just as fear can be learned and unlearned, faith and trust can be learned and forgotten. The human mind can hold faith or fear, but not faith and fear at the same time. In our key scripture for today, we see the disciples of Jesus terrified by a raging sea. Jesus was in the boat sound asleep. They rudely woke him up by their panicky screams. They showed that after all the miracles they had seen, they still lacked confidence in Jesus. The first reading from Hebrews and the Gospel from Mark deal with faith. Faith is probably the most important subject in the Bible. Without faith, we cannot please God. Without faith, we cannot enjoy the fruits of redemption like the sacraments and miracles. In its essence, Faith is a very simple concept to understand. Faith is believing that what God says to you is true and will happen come what may. For example, a woman prays for the fruit of the womb. God says, yes, I will do it. The woman goes home and trusts in God's word. She knows that God's word cannot fail no matter how long it takes for the promise to be fulfilled. When it is fulfilled, she makes a note of it because she wants to remember it. She wants the remembrance to help her the next time she has needs. Different people have developed different ways of dealing with fear. The one that works for me is from Mark 5.36, quote, Fear is useless. All you need is trust, unquote. I copy this scripture and post it on the wall where I can see it easily. When I am afraid, I look at it and repeat it several times. I add, This is my word from God. My word from God is not fear or worry or doubt, but trust. You can defeat fear, worry, and doubt with faith. Read the Bible every day. Reflections and Actionable Challenges from our Scriptural Readings also come from the Laudate. Introductory Prayer 
Lord, I believe that you are in my boat. I want a stronger faith in you. I trust that you will lead me, sinful though I am, to your good harbor. I love you for always accompanying me in this life. Amen. Our Petition Lord, help me to grow in faith. Our First Challenge Crossing to the Other Side We know that we will not remain on earth forever. There is another shore that is our home. Christ has come to remind us of this and show us how to get to that place. Do I take Christ into my boat and let him indicate what I must do in my life? Or do I hold myself back, not accepting the adventure of putting out into the deep with Christ? What is it that holds me back? Second challenge. Teacher, we are perishing. Christ allows our boat to be tossed by difficulties that sometimes seem insurmountable. Having him in our boat is not a guarantee that things will go smoothly. We need to discover that he is working in the midst of difficulties. We need to ask what he is teaching us. If in the midst of trials we are drawing closer to him, there can be a real grace working. Yet, many times we find that we let our confidence in him slip when things get rough. We have not yet learned that all things work together for good for those who love God. Romans 8.28 Our third challenge, the Lord of the wind and the sea. We need to keep in mind that Christ has the ultimate victory. He allows difficulties so that we can grow in abandoning ourselves to Him. When life hurts and it makes no sense, we need to deepen our faith in the One who has conquered sin and death. We will write the final chapter in our life. He will write the final chapter in our life. He will bring us to the safe harbor. We can bolster our faith in Him today by keeping our eyes on His promises and His presence. We can renew our confidence that He will not let our prayers go unanswered, but will respond in His time with a power and efficacy beyond what we expect. In continuing to sail this boat in the midst of the storm, we are giving Him the total control over our destiny we can be in no safer hands. Our Conversation with Christ Lord, I know that when you allow difficulties in my life, you are trying to strengthen my faith and make me see that I need to turn to you. Help me take advantage of these difficulties so I might abandon myself more totally to you. I want to learn to trust you as the Lord of my life. Bring me to safe harbor. Our Resolution I will analyze one of the greater difficulties in my life and see where I need to apply greater trust in God. Continuing Reflections How can we fight fear with faith? Jesus' sleeping presence on the storm-tossed sea reveals the sleeping faith of his disciples. They feared for their lives even though their Lord and Master was with them in the boat. They were asleep to Christ while he was present to them in their hour of need. The Lord is ever-present to us, and in our time of testing he asks the same question, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Do you recognize the Lord's presence with you, especially when you meet the storms of adversity, sorrow, and temptation? Whenever we encounter trouble, the Lord is there with the same reassuring message. It is I. Do not be afraid. Faith must be nourished with the Word of God. What are the characteristics of faith and how can we grow in it? 
Faith is an entirely free gift that God makes to us. Believing is only possible by grace and the help of the Holy Spirit, who moves the heart and who opens the eyes of the mind to understand and accept the truth which God has revealed to us. Faith enables us to relate to God rightly and confidently with trust and reliance. By believing and adhering to His Word, because He is utterly reliable and trustworthy. If we want to live, grow, and persevere in faith, then it must be nourished with the Word of God. Christ's love and truth strengthen us in faith and trust. Fear does not need to cripple us from taking right action or rob us of our trust and reliance on God. Courage working with faith enables us to embrace God's word of truth and love with confidence and to act on it with firm hope in God's promises. The love of God strengthens us in our faith and trust in Him and enables us to act with justice and kindness towards our neighbor even in the face of opposition or harm. Do you allow the love of Christ to rule in your heart and mind? and to move your will to choose what is good in accordance with His will? Lord Jesus, increase my faith in your redeeming love and power, that I may always recognize your abiding presence with me, and give me courage to do your will in all circumstances. Amen. Faith full. Faith is confident assurance concerning what we hope for and conviction about things we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 1. Faith is an assurance. This confidence assurance concerns what we hope for but can't see. We are saved by faith in Jesus. Ephesians 2.8 All depends on faith. Romans 4.16 Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11.6 The conquerors of the world are those who have faith that Jesus is the Son of God. 1 John 5.5 When Jesus comes back a second and final time, he will be looking to see if there is any faith on this earth. Luke 18.8 Therefore, we definitely need faith. Faith is a gift from God. He gives us the gift of faith by giving us Himself. We accept the gift of God Himself by totally giving our lives to Jesus. Then we can have a deep personal relationship with the Father through the Son and in the Spirit. In this relationship we develop a deep faith. If we resist the temptation to control our lives, if we don't try to provide all our needs ourselves, we will see God father us and deepen our faith in Him. If we take up the daily cross, Luke 9.23, we will believe ever more deeply in the crucified Jesus. If we let it be done unto us according to God's word, Luke 1.38, we will develop faith in the Holy Spirit who teaches us John 14:26 to hear him by hearing the word Romans 10:17 The purpose of life is to have faith grow in faith and walk by faith in God 2 Corinthians 5:7 Our prayer Father By faith in you, may I do what I've never done before. God's promise to us. The wind fell off and everything grew calm. Then he said to them, Why are you so terrified? Why are you lacking in faith? Mark 4.39 Thomas A. Kempis quote 
If we strove like valiant men to stand in the battle, verily we should see the Lord from heaven assisting us. For he is ready to help them that fight, trusting in his grace, who himself provideth us occasions to fight in order that we may overcome. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.